A mother from a remote village in India walks a few kilometers carrying her child who has high fever to reach the nearest health center to consult a doctor. The doctor examines the child but cannot infer with certainty whether the child is suffering from typhoid, malaria, dengue or chikungunya or is it the beginning of hepatitis B or hepatitis C or something else. The doctor must run a few tests to correctly diagnose what the child is suffering from. And rightly so, medical diagnostics are estimated to be responsible for more than 70% of all clinical decisions in modern evidence-based medicine. India has come far in diagnostic testing, but we still have a long way to go before we can claim essential diagnostic services are available for all our countrymen. The diagnostics industry valued at about 9 billion US dollars or nearly 68,000 crore rupees is dominated by unorganized players. There are about 3 lakh pathology labs in India and almost half of which are merely testing shops running without any accreditation, without any doctor and failing to meet the regulatory requirements. We also have an acute shortage of pathologists as we have only about 6,000 pathologists in practice in India. India has witnessed a tectonic shift that has been seen in the medical diagnostic sector with the emergence of private labs. This is closely intertwined with my personal journey and the evolution of Dr. Lal Path Labs. The year was 1977. I took over the lab after the untimely device of my father. And at that point of time, I was very happy in my job as a faculty member in the Armed Forces Medical College in Pune, where I was also the assistant warden of the boys hostel. Little did I know that the lab which I was about to take over would one day become the largest lab diagnostics chain in India. I just had a vision to provide the best quality services to our customers. My first few years in private practice were completely spent in making home-brewed reagents for biochemistry and other tests. This involved ordering raw material from abroad as imported reagents or for that matter anything imported was banned in India and I was using single pan Bentler electronic balances using very sensitive pH meters surveying the market and installing the latest spectrophotometers single well gamma scintillation counters for radio amino acids pivoting dangerous radioactive material by mouth as a handheld automated pipettes were not available in India at that time and many such mundane laboratory chores I had to do. And thus started my indoctrination in the beautiful world of private pathology practice. I would like to share some key highlights along the journey that have been the force behind the revolution in diagnostics industry in India. The first one was expanding the reach. In 1982, I introduced franchising for the first time in healthcare in the world. This was done through a hub and spoke model. And today we have more than 216 labs out of and uh, about 4,000 collection centers at about 7,000 sample pickup points. All diagnostic chains in India now swear by this hub and spoke model which I had created. And the government has also realized its merit and has recognized it for implementation for its diagnostic programs, especially beyond the tier one and tier two cities. The next step was expanding the test menu. Way back in 1981, I introduced thyroid tests for the first time in a private lab in India. And since then, we have been striving to expand the list of diagnostic tests that we can offer to people in India. The test for hepatitis B surface antigen in a private lab was also introduced by us in India. We coined 
the term lipid profile, which is now used by everybody for the first time in India, when we introduced the fractions of cholesterol known as HDL, LDL and VLDL cholesterol, in addition to the total cholesterol and triglycerides, which were already available. Today, we offer in India more than 2,500 pathology different tests and nearly 2,000 radiology and cardiology tests, including several high tests for rare and complex diseases. We also have the biggest histopathology center and the kidney biopsy center in the world. Today, we do up to 1,400 biopsies in a day. And for kidney biopsies, we are the only private lab having an electron microscope in the whole of South Asia. The next was, step was bringing high-end equipment and keeping abreast with technology. I took it upon myself to ensure that the Indian population had access to high-tech, accurate, automated, computerized analyzers. We introduced many auto analyzers in the 80s and 90s, not only for the first time in India, but across the entire geographical zone from Eastern Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Southeast Asia. To enhance the ease of patients and improve quality of sample collection, I brought to India a unique blood collection system using vacuum, known as now vacutainers, and this was done 32 years back, which has now completely changed the way blood is collected in India. We opened Asia's biggest laboratory, which is our National Reference Laboratory at Rohini in Northwest Delhi in 2010. The next step was digitization or becoming more computer savvy in lab. Every year or very early in my practice, I realized the importance of digitizing our lab processes and records and thus the first computerized dedicated laboratory information management system or LIMS was created in India in 1986 by us. In 1999, we deployed the world's most prestigious triple G laboratory software known as Ultra. It gave us a bi-directional interface and provided connectivity with our collection center. We have an IBM designed and operated data center at our Rohini reference lab. The next step was finding capital and infusing capital to sustain the growth and expansion. In 2005, Westbridge Capital Partners acquired 26% stake in our business and infused 28 crore rupees, equivalent to $3.8 billion at that time, which was another first in the Indian diagnostic sector. 10 years later, in 2015, we went public and had one of the most successful IPO launches. In the last five or six years, we have further enhanced our focus on digitizing and automation of our labs and processes and further expansion of our footprint in the country. Now we'll talk about the COVID-19 testing in India. It has been nearly two years that the world is fighting against the COVID-19 pandemic. Discovered as a novel coronavirus in December 2019, and declared as a pandemic in March 2020, COVID-19 has infected nearly 22 crore people and killed 45 lakh of them across the globe. India has witnessed nearly three and a half crore cases with four and a half lakh deaths due to COVID-19. The pandemic also plunged the global economy into deep contraction. Estimates suggest that the world could lose up till 4 trillion US dollars or nearly 300 lakh crore rupees in both 2020 and 2021. Last year, India witnessed a contraction of 7.3% in its GDP. No country has been able to completely eliminate COVID-19. In fact, experts suggest that a more realistic epidemiological endpoint is when COVID-19 can be managed as an endemic disease. We have the capacity to test more than 20 lakh samples a day, and we crossed 100 crore doses of vaccination 
and 1,150 additional oxygen plants have been made functional. Significant number of critical care equipment have been procured and provisions have been made for adding beds during a surge, which we hope never happens. The healthcare industry as a whole and the diagnostic sector in particular has played a very important part in the role in the response to the pandemic. As SARS-CoV-2 is a novel virus, the pandemic threw at us multiple concurrent clinical priorities. We had to understand the pathophysiology of the disease, control its transmission, and devise effective treatment options. The starting point to do all this is to detect and characterize the causative agent, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. With advancements in science and technology, hundreds of molecular tests and immunoassays were rapidly developed. I take pride in sharing that the diagnostics industry has been a trailblazer in becoming self-reliant or Atmanirbhar in this pandemic. Till date, the ICMR has approved nearly 170 RT-PCR kits and more than 50 rapid antigen test kits. Majority of these kits are indigenously developed and manufactured. The country has done more than 60 crore tests for COVID-19 so far. And with the help of these 3000 odd labs, which are approved by ICMR. Private diagnostic labs have been instrumental in achieving these huge figures. Today out of nearly 1900 labs, carrying out the RT-PCR test, which is the gold standard for COVID-19, more than 64% are private labs. In our labs, that is Dr. Lal Path Labs alone, we have carried out more than 30 lakh COVID RT-PCR tests. We are the first private lab in India to have been approached by the ICMR and the union government to supplement the government's efforts in COVID-19 testing. While RT-PCR in private labs started at a price point of 4,500 rupees in March 2020, today the RT-PCR tests are available for as low as 400 rupees. During this time, India has also witnessed a 400% rise in the number of labs capable of doing RT-PCR tests. <clears throat> Within our own system, that is Dr. Lal Path Labs, we have operationalized 20 additional molecular labs since the starting of the pandemic 20 months ago, which means that we've been adding nearly one lab a month. Apart from the gold standard, which is a conventional RT-PCR test and rapid antigen tests that can be done in the field setting, constant advancements are also being made in the field of diagnostics for COVID-19. Rapid molecular platforms like GeneXpert, a closed cartridge-based system that can generate results in 45 minutes are also gaining popularity. Wide availability of inexpensive, accurate and easy to use tests for COVID-19 will remain crucial in India's endeavor to fight COVID-19 and get back to the normal. We were able to pinpoint the correct strategy for managing the pandemic very early on. I call it the T3V strategy, that is test, track, treat and vaccinate and tracking also means isolation. We just have to continue to do the same more rigorously when we suspect a surge. Last week, the country achieved a great milestone of carrying out 100 crore vaccinations. The next phase of vaccination will have to tackle the challenges of vaccine hesitancy, especially for the people who have already got their first dose and need of booster doses for the older, immunocompromised and comorbid population. We need to overcome vaccine hesitancy with an aggressive media blitzkrieg in which we should rope in eminent film stars, sportsmen, doctors, schools and college students, NCC, Rotary Clubs, Lions Club, NGOs, etc. As individuals, we must not become complacent. I urge everyone to follow COVID-19 appropriate behavior, 
especially wearing masks in public, get vaccinated and encourage others to get vaccinated to help India resume economic activities at the pre-pandemic levels and grow further to become a five trillion US dollar economy by 2025. And beyond COVID, we have the unfinished agenda of making quality healthcare accessible and affordable for all in India. This includes transforming primary healthcare that can take care of 80% of one's healthcare needs. The next is reversing the burden of non-communicable diseases <clears throat> that are responsible for 65% of deaths in India, as well as augmenting healthcare provisions for secondary and tertiary care. Personally, I have taken on the challenge of transforming primary healthcare and arresting the burden of NCDs at primary healthcare level. And this has been done through a philanthropic initiative known as Arvind Lal Vadra Lal Foundation or ALVL Foundation. We are closely working with the government on smart health and wellness centers for delivering comprehensive primary health care and leveraging technology and digital health. When Dr. Lal Path Labs could go from testing 20 to 30 odd patients in a day in 1977 to testing 2 crore in a year, I am certain that these 1.5 lakh HWCs or health wellness centers can revolutionize primary health care in India. Thank you very much.